الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها النبي جاهد الكفار والمنافقين واغلظ عليهم ومأواهم جهنم وبئس المصير يحلفون بالله ما قالوا ولقد قالوا كلمة الكفر وكفروا بعد إسلامهم وهموا بما لم ينالوا وما نقموا إلا أن أغناهم الله ورسوله من فضله فإن يتوبوا يك خيرا لهم وإن يتولوا يعذبهم الله عذابا أليما في الدنيا والآخرة وما لهم وما لهم في الأرض من ولي ولا نصير ومنهم من عاهد الله لئن آتانا من فضله لنصدقن ولنكونن من الصالحين فلما آتاهم من فضله بخلوا به وتولوا وهم مرضون فأعقبهم نفاقا في قلوبهم إلى يوم يلقونه بما أخلف الله بما أخلف الله ما وعدوه وبما كانوا يكذبون ألم يعلموا أن الله يعلم سرهم ونجواهم وأن الله علام الغيوب صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين يا أيها النبي أو أول نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم جاهد الكفار والمنافقين واغلظ عليهم fight carry out jihad struggle against the disbelievers والمنافقين and the hypocrites واغلظ عليهم and be strict with them this is a direct command of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to do jihad against the kuffar. Those who are open kuffar against them, jihad with sword or armed jihad is also commanded. Those who are munafiqeen, whose nifaq or their hypocrisy is hidden or known to Allah subhanahu wa taala, Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the jihad against them will not be armed, but with words and with explanation. That full effort will be made to bring them to the right path by making them understand the right thing and the most favorable thing for them. وَغْلُوظْ عَلَيْهِمْ Be strict with them. So, غِلْظَ versus رَأْفَ غِلْظَ is being strict, being hard on them. Be hard on them. There is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be strict with them. رَأْفَ رَأْفَ means kind-heartedness, showing, uh, you know, soft nature towards them. So the command here is that be strict with them. Now the tafsir of this ayah, the explanation of this ayah will be seen as how the Prophet ﷺ implemented it. And there is no record in the whole life of the Prophet ﷺ that the Prophet ﷺ was harsh tongued with anybody. Somebody would come to the Prophet ﷺ, even the enemies of the Prophet ﷺ, even the kuffar, the Prophet ﷺ always spoke to them softly and gently. So, this is not the meaning of the word in its literal meaning that be harsh tongued on them, with them or be harsh with them, but be strict with them in enforcement of the law. So, don't show any leniency towards them in enforcing the law and do full jihad against them, against the kuffar, an armed jihad, against the munafiqeen, a jihad with explanation and logic. So this is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and may Allah subhanahu wa protect us. As Adam Fasin have written that when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not harsh in his manners and his speech with even the kuffar, then how can we think that it is permissible for us? It does not matter if we are right or if we are wrong. It is not permissible for us to be harsh in speech and in our manners with our fellow Muslim brothers. So how can we consider it? permissible may Allah subhanahu wa protect us وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمُ وَإِسَ الْمَصِيرِ these people the kuffar and the munafiqeen their abode is jahannam their living places the hellfire وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ it's a bad bad place يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ مَا قَالُوا وَلَقَدْ قَالُوا كَلِمَةَ الْكُفْرِ وَكَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِسْلَامِهِمْ وَهَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا يَحْلِفُون they did not say anything. وَلَقَدْ قَالُوا كَلِمَةَ الْكُفْرِ And they, while indeed Allah SWT is saying for sure, without doubt they had 
said the word of kufr wa kafaru ba'da islamihim and they had for sure done kufr ba'd after their apparent islam wa hammu bima lam yanalu and they had intended for what they could not achieve so this refers to a particular incident that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there's two incidents that happened one is that when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his sahaba went for tabuk the expedition of tabuk in tabuk the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave a khutbah a speech in which he told that what a sorry and what a bad and the munafiqin the hypocrites are going to face so when one of the munafiqin his name was jullas he was in this gathering and he went back to in his own circle so what the way of these munafiqin was the hypocrites was that in their own circles they would narzubilla say things of kufr and plan to kill the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all sorts of things and when they were caught on when they, when when it came out in public they would start swearing by allah taking oaths that we never said that and we are not a part of this conspiracy or anything so in tabuk the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave a khutbah in which he told that such and such end is waiting for the munafiqin so one of these people jullas when he heard it he went back to his own circle and he said that if what muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that is true then all of us are worse than donkeys so there was a sahabi passing by his name is amir ibn qais radhiyallahu anhu he heard it he overheard him saying it and he said the word of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not false and for sure in reality you are all worse than donkeys So this finally came to the knowledge of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well and Amir ibn Qais radhiyallahu anhu told the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that such people were having a conversation and this is what they uh, said and this is what I said so Jullas when he was called he said that I have sa- said nothing of the sort and Amir ibn Qais radhiyallahu anhu he has falsely accused me and false accusation was a very serious thing bhutan or tohmat was a very serious thing we take it very lightly but it was a very serious thing so to resolve the matter the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the manner prescribed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they when they reached back to medina the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had them both come to the mimbar and swear by allah that they did not say anything like that so the jullas he very easily came and took a false oath that i never said such thing and amir ibn qais radhiyallahu anhu he has falsely accused me amir ibn qais radhiyallahu anhu when his t- turn came he also came and he swore by allah that this is the truth i am saying the truth and i have not made a false statement and then he raised his hand and made dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that ya allah open this matter send wahi to the rasul allah alayhi wasallam and open this matter upon your nabi through wahi the rasul allah alayhi wasallam was also sitting he said amin Uh, even they were before they were about to even they were before they were able to move from their place jibril alayhi salam came and this ayah came in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified and told that for sure this person and these people they have said kalimatul kufr and <coughs> they are doing this and the baraat of amir ibn qais radhiyallahu anhu was given but in this ayah there's these words fa in yatubu khairan lahum that if they make tauba it is good for them so jullas he was a lucky person right upon hearing this ayah he said that ya rasulullah amir ibn qais is right i was wrong i t- took a false o- oath i confess my crime but therein in this very ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said fa in yatubu yaku khairan lahum if they make tauba even after all they've done if they make tauba it is better for them so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made room for forgiveness in this ayah in this very ayah so i make tauba and he made tauba and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned his days and he became a true good muslim so anyway the other thing where it says wahammu bima lam yanalu they tried to achieve what they could not get this refers to as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was returning from tabuk 12 of these munafiqin went ahead and hid in a on the way planning to nauzu billah assassinate the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam beforehand and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam changed his way so they could not get it so this is what they kept on planning but they did not get wa ma naqamu illa an aghnahum allah wa rasuluhu min fadli and they have reacted for nothing but that allah and his messenger have enriched them with his grace so all that they are able to do is because of the mercy and the giving of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they are they are doing these things but allah and rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam are still giving them room fa in yatubu khayra yaku khayra lahum this is the part that i was talking about that if they repent it is good for them wa in yatawallaw and if they turn away 
يعذبهم الله عذابا أليما في الدنيا والآخرة. الله will give them a strong punishment, a painful punishment في الدنيا والآخرة. The punishment is in this dunya and the hereafter as well. The punishment for munafiqin in this dunya is that they will not get the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would used to give dua to people who the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be happy with, and these people the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was of course not happy with. Then all the good deeds that they were doing, for example, spending in the path of Allah or going in the path of Allah, all of that was under compulsion and not from sincerity of heart. So none of that was. Giving, bringing any benefit to them in this world, or any good news from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, any glad tidings from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and in the hereafter for sure, punishment has been mentioned of hellfire. Wa ma lahum fil ardi min waliy wa la nasir, and the whole wide earth, there will be nobody for them, neither a friend on earth nor a helper. And this is what this this was their state all their life that they lived under constant fear of being pulled out of their closet that day. This is what they were doing, and this is their reality. Okay, then I will. Okay. Shalla, we'll continue. There's um, another story about the relating to the same sadaqat and munafiqin. Inshallah, we'll do it next time. ربنا تقبل منا أنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا أنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا وولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه المعين آمين الحمد لله رب العالمين